was Halloween weekend. It was falling on a Saturday this year. My mom always takes decorations and giving out candy very seriously. It's almost like she has to compete with the neighbors to have the most sought after house to trick or treat at. We live on a corner in a regular suburban neighborhood, so when we're decorating, we also decorate the side yard of the house too. Since Halloween was a Saturday this year, kids started trick or treating earlier in the day. However, it was a cloudy, cold day and there was a chance of rain in the forecast. My mom apparently couldn't understand that this may have been a factor as to why there weren't many trick-or-treaters out. Instead, after a few trick-or-treaters seemingly skipped our house, she assumed it was because there weren't enough decorations out to attract the trick-or-treaters. She told me to go get whatever containers were left in the attic containing decorations. I insisted this wasn't necessary, but she insisted otherwise and forced me to. So I went up to the attic, which is directly above my bedroom. The attic door is in the hallway upstairs. I pulled down the door and climbed up the ladder. We have the holiday containers sorted a specific way, so I went over to where the Halloween containers were. There were only a couple still left up there. I opened one to see what was inside and said good enough. I started dragging the container out towards the attic door, then I carefully slid the container down the ladder. As I was about to climb down out of the attic, I thought I heard something on the opposite side of the attic like a piece of wood cracking under the weight or pressure of something. I looked over to the wall of containers in the far corner. It's an attic though. The sound of wood snapping or cracking really wasn't that weird. I climbed down out of the attic and brought the decorations downstairs. From there, my mom and I put out some more decorations in the front yard. It was really windy and felt like rain at any second. There really weren't many trick-or-treaters at all. My mom was disappointed because she goes all out with the candy too. She's always been one of those people who makes a bunch of homemade goodie bags with a bunch of different candies inside. I could see how upset she was that she wasn't going to give most of them away at this rate. The day progressed and I was in my room playing video games on my laptop while my mom was downstairs in the living room and kitchen handing out candies to the few trick-or-treaters that would come. And then it started to rain and that pretty much put a damper on the rest of the day trick-or-treaters wise. I was gaming in my room when I heard a crack from above my room, in the attic. Again, not really abnormal, but I made a mental note that that was the second time I heard something from up there. The rest of the day was rainy, and that night it turned into a thunderstorm, perfect for Halloween night. I used to be a big gamer in my teens, and so instead of going out with friends on a Saturday night, I would often just stay in playing video games unfortunately. This night was no exception to that. I stayed up really late into the night, past my parents. It was still raining outside. Then I heard something above me again. This time it sounded like footsteps. I was wondering if my mom was in the attic putting stuff away, but it was late at night. I sat and listened for a while. The sound stopped. I paused my game and went out into the hallway after a couple minutes, and I saw the attic door was open. I now heard noises from downstairs in the kitchen. I heard the sound of things being moved around in the fridge. My heart was racing now. I tiptoed down the hall to my parents' room and quietly opened the door. When I saw both my parents fast asleep in bed, I felt my stomach twist and I felt sick. I quietly closed the door and went up to my dad to shake him awake. He woke up easily and I whispered to him there's someone in the house. He immediately sat up and said, what? I said there's someone in the kitchen right now in the fridge. I think they're hiding in the attic. My dad is not a large or confrontational man. He keeps a police baton under his bed in the case of an emergency, but I don't think he ever thought he'd have to actually use it. My dad told me to stay quiet. He went to go look out into the hall quietly. When he came back inside, he whispered that he saw someone down the hall climbing into the attic. He shut the bedroom door and he locked it and then called 911. By now, my mom was awake too, but we all stayed as quiet as possible and didn't freak out. It was now a waiting game until the police showed up. My dad went downstairs to open the front door. The attic door was now shut. The police had to go inside, and they found some homeless looking man hiding in the corner behind that wall of containers. The sounds I was hearing were in fact from a person the whole time. The man, while seeming dirty and kind of scary looking, apparently was very straightforward and honest, that he simply walked in when he saw the front door was open the day before, and he had no place to sleep. He brought one of our blankets up there, and there was a jar of peanut butter up there too that he was eating. 
the whole thing is still very disturbing. And I wonder how things would have played out if I or my father confronted the man instead of the police. My parents didn't press any charges. When I was 18, I threw a house party at my parents' house for Halloween. It was closed invite, meaning I told people not to bring strangers. That was a rule my parents gave me. They were not at the house that weekend, which was why I was able to throw the party. With another rule being the place needed to be even cleaner than it was before the party. I invited around 50 people and probably around 40 ended up showing up. The party started around 6. It was starting to get dark out. It would be partially in the backyard and partially the first floor. My parents left me money for refreshments like sodas and food to leave in the kitchen for people to take. I told my parents it would be a non-alcoholic party, but I think they knew that was a load of shit. My friend who's a few years older than me brought his DJ equipment to DJ, and the party was in full swing by dark. Everyone seemed to listen and not bring strangers, because I recognized everyone. Just about everyone came up to me and greeted me after entering. I didn't drink too much because it was my party and I wanted to be somewhat responsible, but everyone else was getting drunker the later the night went. Eventually one of my friends came out of the house after getting food, and he asked who that guy in the skeleton bodysuit inside the house was. I didn't recall seeing anyone in a bodysuit costume, so I went inside the house, where there were a few people hanging out in the kitchen. I asked if they saw someone wearing a skeleton bodysuit, and someone told me yeah, it seemed like he was snooping around the house. I grew concerned when I heard this, and I asked if anyone invited him or knew who it was. No one inside knew him. I looked around the house and then found him. He was walking down the stairs. I asked, who are you? And he said, Mike, I was using the bathroom upstairs. It was a really deep voice. He sounded older. His frame was also a bit larger. Not like muscular, just a stockier looking build. I asked, who invited you? And he said, Tom. I didn't know a single Tom. So I asked, who's Tom? Then I just asked him if he could take his mask off. He didn't listen or even respond. He just walked past me towards the front door, then he left. I ran upstairs to check if any of the rooms had been gone through, and if anything had been stolen. All the doors upstairs, except for the bathroom door, were closed, and after a quick look, it seemed nothing was stolen. So I went to lock the front door, and then I told a bunch of my friends about how weird that just was. I went outside to ask a few friends if they knew who invited the skeleton guy, and not a single person knew who it was. Eventually, I gave it a rest. The party was winding down around midnight. Most people were starting to leave. A few close friends stayed behind a little later to help clean up. After all was said and done, it was a successful party. When everyone was gone, I started getting ready for bed. One of my friends Vinny stayed over on the couch downstairs. After brushing my teeth and changing into pajamas, I decided to go hang out with Vinny in the living room for a while. We had some drinks and just watched funny YouTube videos on TV. My little sister, who was 14, was asleep by now. She didn't hang outside with the party because she was too young. We were being quiet so as not to wake her. But when Vinny and I both heard noises from upstairs, it seemed that we woke her up. I was expecting the sounds, which sounded like footsteps, to move to the bathroom or something. I got a little confused when I never heard my sister's door open. I decided to go upstairs just to check on her. I knocked on her door and she didn't answer. I opened it a crack and saw that she was sleeping. So what were those sounds I was hearing then? I went to my parents' room and realized the door wasn't clicked shut. I was able to just push it open without twisting the doorknob, which was odd because I made sure their door was closed before the party. I looked inside the room without turning on the lights. Then as I backed out of the room, I looked through the crack of the door and on the other side, I saw that guy in the skeleton bodysuit. I made no mistake, I knew what I was looking at. I'm impressed with myself for not running or screaming. I pretended I didn't see him and pulled the door closed. Then I went downstairs and told Vinny that the guy from before is in the house. I had him call 911 and tell them that there's an intruder in the house. While I tiptoed back upstairs to my sister's room, went inside and shook her to wake her up. I explained to her what was going on and made sure she would be quiet while following me downstairs. She did a good job not freaking out either. When we were downstairs, we met Vinny in the kitchen by the back door, where we went outside to the backyard. 
then we cut through the side to the front and went to our neighbor's house, ringing the bell at least three times. Our neighbor let us wait with him for the police. But at some point before the police got there, that guy escaped through our parents' bedroom window. I know because the window was now open. Their closet door was also open where my dad keeps his safe. It's as if it were someone who knew about the safe being there that tried breaking into it or just taking the whole safe out from the floor. It was obvious how the man broke in. He simply just walked into the party again. It could have been any number of people though. We never found out who it was. But it was someone who knew I was having a party. Someone older. And someone who knew about my parents safe. My sister ended up telling our parents about it. And obviously that was the last party I was ever allowed to throw at their house. This happened in 2016, when I was 15. This would be my last year trick-or-treating on Halloween, so I wanted to make it a big occasion. My mom is pretty laid back, so it turned into a huge multi-day thing for me. The day before Halloween, I would have a sleepover with my friends Davis and Zach, skip school the next day on Halloween, trick-or-treat with Davis and Zach, and then have a sleepover with just my girlfriend Amber and I. This story carries into both nights, so I'll try to explain the best I can. My basement had just gotten renovated into a man cave, so obviously my friends and I wanted to stay down there for the night. The basement had a long hallway right to the man cave, and the light switch to the hallway didn't work. It had a pretty creepy vibe, but for tonight, that would be a good thing. My mom made us cookies, and then we went down into the cave. It was around 11pm, and we had just finished watching the original Scream. Our second movie of the night would be Paranormal Activity which none of us had watched before, and that's why I picked it. I remember pausing the movie not even 30 seconds in because of the motion-detected light in the backyard turning on. It lit the whole room up, ruining the creepy vibe we had going. So I waited for the 30-second time or so it would turn off, and then unpaused the movie. Then after about another 30 seconds, the light went off for a second time, and I started getting annoyed. Davis asked me what kept making it turn on, and I said I had no clue. 30 more seconds passed by and the light turned off again and I played the movie again. It was at this point I wanted to know what the hell was going on and so I asked for Davis and Zach to come upstairs with me so I could see what it was. They agreed and went up the stairs to look through my back door. By the time we got there, the light in the backyard had turned off so it was hard to see. We stood for 5 minutes waiting for something to happen but nothing ever did. We went back down to the den and decided to turn off the movie for the night and just sit on our phones and talk. We weren't really invested in it anyway. About two hours later, everyone was asleep except for me. I was just scrolling on my phone when the familiar glow of the motion light came through the window for now the fourth time. I was exhausted though, and so I figured it was just another group of kids trying to prank us or something. But the more I thought about it, the less it made sense. I figured I would check the backyard one last time, and just like I thought would happen, no one was out there. I gave up, so I went back down to the den and called it a night. The next night came in the blink of an eye, and next thing I knew, I had a bag full of candy. I felt kind of sad. In a way, this was like my childhood ending. However, I figured I should just try and enjoy the night and not reminisce. At this point, I still had lingering thoughts about the previous night, and whether I should tell Amber or not. She was scared of everything, and I didn't want to ruin a night with her over a story. We were at one of our last houses on the route we took, when Amber let out a loud yell in pain. We asked what happened, and then she told us that she had a rock thrown at her. I turned around to find some guy in a clown mask standing around 15 feet behind us. This was amid the clown epidemic. I told him to get lost, but he just stood there. I analyzed him a bit more and realized this guy looked like a grown man. He only had a clown mask on also. The rest of his quote-unquote costume was just normal clothes. We kept walking, but all the man did was stand there. It was at this point we called it a night and skipped the last few houses out of anxiety. We went back to my house so my friends could get picked up. And just like that, it was just my girlfriend and I looking at candy on the floor in the den. She asked if we could watch a movie, and so I decided that I would just turn on Paranormal Activity again later that night to finish it. I remember the scene in the movie perfectly. It was Mika walking around to find his girlfriend when suddenly the screen went black and the dimmed lights in the cave turned off. 
My girlfriend and I looked at each other. I realized the power went out. This immediately made me start to get paranoid. The power had never gone out in this house unless there was a storm. I checked my weather app and it said it was normal conditions that night, not even a little bit of rain. I told Amber to stay in the cave, but she felt scared down there so she decided to come upstairs with me to see what was going on. The generator to the house was in the backyard and that's when I got the terrible feeling in my stomach. The thoughts of last night creeping back to me and this time I didn't have Davis and Zach with me and Amber wasn't very strong. All the worst thoughts came to my mind as I opened the sliding door to the backyard. All I heard was crickets chirping, and I figured that maybe I was just overthinking. Amber and I passed by the motion light, which didn't kick on now. I was about five feet from the generator when I thought I heard a twig snap. Amber and I looked towards the forest on the far side of the yard with the only sounds being crickets, but we felt like we were being watched. I almost felt like I had to throw up. I decided we'd rather stay in the house with no lights on than be out here. I didn't want to be outside any longer. Amber started making her way inside, and that's when I saw him. The same guy in a clown mask, standing to the side of my shed. We just stared at each other for a while, like he was trying to scare us. And then he suddenly jumped forward and started sprinting at us. I ran to the back door and slammed it shut after Amber. We ran down into the cave, and we got behind the bar in the corner of the room. That's when I realized I never locked the back door, and we heard a slam from upstairs. Now everything was silent in the man cave. Amber started texting 911 because she was too scared to talk. She explained that there was a man in the house. Minutes felt like hours. It must have been like 10 minutes tops, and the sound I had been dreading to hear came. The basement door opening. I heard footsteps come down the stairs and down the hallway. My girlfriend was breathing too loud. I had to cover her mouth. I heard footsteps come towards our direction and stop. I was starting to think my only option might be to fight if he finds out where we were. I grabbed a beer bottle from behind the bar and prepared myself mentally to fight if I had to. The room stayed silent for quite a while, but then we heard sirens come from outside. I realized this was the perfect distraction and moment to strike. In a fraction of a second, I got up, ran at him, and swung at his head with the bottle, but I tripped and fell after I swung and I hit the ground. I looked up to see that man with the clown mask from earlier. I think his mask somewhat blocked my swing because he barely flinched. I realized this was a stupid idea because it seemed like he was about to go back upstairs after hearing the sirens anyway. He looked down at me on the floor. I was about to yell at Amber to run as I laid on the floor scrambling to get up. My legs felt numb and I realized my life could potentially end right now, but the police could be heard outside. The man stared for another moment before running up the stairs, and then we heard the back door open and slam again. I ran upstairs to let the police in and told them he went out back. And of course you're wondering, the answer is no, the police somehow never caught this guy to my knowledge. I can't go down to that man cave alone anymore without feeling anxious, even to this day, so we would hang out at Amber's for a while after that. There's nothing I can do but look back and be grateful that we're still alive. I'll never forget that feeling of looking up and seeing that clown mask staring down at me as I flailed on the ground.